Hi, my name is Maddie, and in today's video I'm going to show you my process for completing a commissioned painting. So for this project, I was asked to paint some locally grown fruits and nuts. In total, I ended up painting 11 plants on an 18 by 24 inch piece of hot press watercolor paper. And I used gouache, so it was the largest gouache painting that I had done so far. So I was so excited to get started on this project. I ended up having a lot of fun and learning a lot throughout the process. I hope it'll be interesting for you to watch as I go through each step. Also feel free to skip ahead to any chapter of this video that's most interesting for you to watch. The painting process comes a little bit later in the video as I'm going to start with how I get organized and some project management tips. So let's get started! So to start off with, I wanted to show you my complete process for getting set up and all the business side of things for starting a commission before any pencil ever hits paper. There's a lot of paperwork and other things to do, so I'm going to show you how that whole process works for me. So the client reached out to me on Instagram asking if I was open for commissions, and I said I was, and asked what they were looking for. And so they told me a little bit of what their idea was for a painting. They wanted a piece with different crops and fruit, possibly a tree in the middle. And so I said, that's great, that sounds like something I'd love to do, I love painting plants. Next step was to figure out a little bit more about the scope and details of this project. I sent over this little presentation with different styles, different mediums, and the first one gouache and some examples of paintings in that style. Second one was watercolor, and I tried to include relevant examples of things that would be in the client's painting as well, for example leaves and fruits, anything I had that was relevant. And I put a little description about what defined each style, so this was my easiest and fastest watercolor style. So I said that the gouache would take the longest and cost the most money. And then I also put in a little size guide for different sizes of paintings and how they compare, just to visualize a little bit better about how big a painting can be. I gave a range from the low end to the high end of what a painting would cost. And to get this pricing estimate, I used the time that it took me on previous projects that were very similar. So I had one project I done that was similar, and that's the project on the left here with a bunch of different microtrophs, microtrophic plants. And that was the most similar in my mind because it had a bunch of different plants and it was in gouache and it was the same size. So I used the time I spent on that, which I keep track of for every project, to estimate how long I thought this project would take me if I did a similar size in a gouache, which would be the high end. Client chose gouache and they chose 18 by 24 inch piece of paper. So now that we had that nailed down, it was time to get the contract and the invoice going. For big projects like this especially, it's important to have a contract. Even if it's someone you know you trust and they trust you, it's just important to have it all in writing. So I have a standard agreement that I update, modify for each project, and it has description of the project, the fees, and that there needs to be a 50% deposit up front. And then once I complete the work, there will be the rest will be paid. And then I have a little bit of an outline of how the process will go and my estimate of the time, which in the end wasn't accurate, but it's good to have a little timeline. And then a little bit about the copyright of the painting. Once that's signed, I use PayPal to send an invoice and they do take a fee of the payment, but I think that's kind of standard for payment processors, so it's just part of doing business. And once that was all signed and the deposit was paid, I keep a log of every project I do. So I started a spreadsheet and I have the job number here. This would be the year and then the number the project is that year. I have a little title, client, contact, how they found me, um, every detail that I need to know for that project. And then at the end I'll put a link or the total time the project took me so I can keep track of that as well. And I also, I use Jira project management to keep track of all my projects that I'm working on and where they're at when they're due. So I'll create a project 
And then I can put in all the details and I can create subtasks like sketch and transfer the sketch, underpainting and final painting. You can update your progress on each of them. And then once it's in review, I have a little section for that, but you can customize those steps. And I also put a due date, so if, and you can put a due date for any of these ones or for the whole project. So you could put a due date and then there's a calendar so that will show me here it is on my calendar and I can have everything laid out so I can plan out what I'm doing. So once I started the sketch, I had a list of the specific fruits and crops that we needed to include in the painting. I created a sketch and I was really happy with it. I created this version with a little tree in the middle and I labeled each fruit so it was very clear that I had hit all the plants on the list. And then I also created the second version because we had discussed having two versions of the first sketch. This one I just kind of used the same fruits as the same drawings that I had done for sketch A and I rearranged them and changed a bit of the leaves to make them fit in a composition like this. And so I sent this presentation over with the little rough color, the outlines, uh, the labels to make everything very clear. And so they decided that they liked the sketch B best, but that there were too many leaves, too much citrus overtaking the whole composition. So it's very just green and yellow. And they wanted more of the process of the fruit growing on the branch. So with the, like, for example, almond to have almond blossoms and then the unripe almonds to the ripe almonds ready for harvesting. So I got to work and I made a third sketch and this is the third sketch and then I also put in bees because that was another request on the feedback and I kind of used some of the same elements from before and just adjusted them and added and made these longer to have flowers and unripe almonds and I took away a couple of the large citrus fruits and the color version looked like this so it had a lot more purples and pinks as well and client was happy with the sketch, so it was time to get started. The first thing I did was print out my sketch from Photoshop onto six pieces of paper, taped it down, and made a refined sketch with more details using tracing paper over top of the printed sheets. So there were a lot of details to add since at this scale I could really see how detailed everything really needed to be. I like to have everything planned out to the level of detail that it's going to be when I paint with gouache. So here is the finished sketch on tracing paper. And now I needed to cut the paper to the correct size. So I don't have a paper cutter big enough to fit the large sheet of watercolor paper I was working with. So I decided to go for a deckled ripped edge. And I used a ruler and an X-Acto knife to fold and tear the paper. And my camera fell. <laughs> I folded and tore the paper. And here's me with the end result. I was really proud that it actually worked. And I, I like how it turned out. So I'm about to do the thing that I've been dreading and putting off this whole project for, and that's transferring the actual sketch to the watercolor paper. Actually, there's a couple things that have been roadblocks in this project that I was really scared to do. The first one was printing it out and getting the sketch to look nice on paper. The second one was tearing the paper to the right size because I don't have uh, cutting supplies to actually cut it. And I didn't know if it was possible to tear it nicely, but it was. So that was a relief. And then now the third roadblock is transferring it with uh, transfer paper. Hoping everything's lined up and centered. And then I'll get started painting. So I got transfer paper and put it underneath the tracing paper to transfer my sketch onto the watercolor paper underneath. And this was a pretty long process and my hand was pretty sore by the end of it because I had to apply enough pressure to make sure the lines actually transferred down below to the watercolor paper. Once I was done, I had my whole sketch on my paper and I was ready to paint. So 
So I decided to do an underpainting underneath my gouache painting, and I used watercolor for this in a yellow ochre with a little bit of permanent rose. I just did this so that I would have a more solid base to start, and so I wasn't just painting straight onto blank watercolor paper, which is both kind of intimidating and hard to build up that solid base if you don't have anything underneath. I'm not really sure if it made a difference in the final look, but I know it made a difference in my process, so I think it's worth it. And then it was time to get everything set up for painting. I had my studio assistant, my references on my computer there, my paper, my Stuywit palette. For this painting I used gouache, so I used M. Graham and Winsor & Newton gouache. I used this brush for most of the large shapes and a small round brush for the details. I also use Oxcol liquid as medium because mixing your gouache with water will lose some of the opacity, but mixing with Oxcol liquid allows it to be more workable without losing that opacity. So I mixed up some paint, tested it on my test swatch, and put down the very first brush stroke, which was super scary, but so satisfying because that orange color was really nice. So now I will just continue painting each plant and you can enjoy the process and I'll be back in a little bit.
And here it is with all of the big elements finished. So now I just need to add a couple of these here, here, and here, 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 and here. And then it will be finished. It's so crazy to see it all come together. And I'm so excited. I think it looks great. And I feel like I've learned so much about painting leaves. Like, these leaves are definitely better than the ones I did at the beginning. Now that I had finally finished the painting, all I had left to do was to scan it and drop it off. My scanner is pretty small so I scanned the painting in multiple sections and used Photoshop to combine them all into one file. So now I had a full resolution file and permission from the client to sell prints of it. So I have prints of each individual plant as well as the whole painting available on my website and the link is in the description. And that's all for now I guess. If you're making it to the end of this long video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching my process. I really enjoyed painting this painting. If you have any questions about any part of this video or would like to see anything in further detail in a future video, let me know in the comments and I would love to answer those questions for you. But other than that, I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for watching.